The devastating series of attacks began shortly before 9 o'clock in New York. Eyewitnesses saw a plane hit one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center, packed with thousands of office workers. The first tower was well alight and smoking, when minutes later a second plane came in low and hit the other tower. Deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. The United States of America will use all our resources to conquer this enemy. This battle will take time and resolve. But make no mistake about it. We will win. Big explosion happened. Some guy came out, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Brothers and sisters, let us pray for all those who are mercilessly slaughtered all over the world. Even at this moment we speak, innocent people are being slaughtered for different reasons. I think that the Western countries should uh, tr start thinking now, why? Why are these things happening to them? Why are people um, terrorizing the West, for instance, America or Britain, if it comes to that, you know, um, to find out the root cause why are you doing this? Buddha shows how we can understand the real causes of suffering in, in our own minds, also in the minds of everyone in the whole world. And it's only by understanding the actual causes that we, we can you know, prevent the, the problems, pre prevent suffering. Uh, you could say it's because that the West has not taken proper concern for the third world countries for the east you could say that it's a tension between religions you could say that it's a, a conflict of uh, um, nations you could say all these sort of things but uh, i think at the end of the day you've got to look at the real fundamental causes of uh, the rise of terrorism and i would say that those lie in poverty and injustice and oppression and that can be on either side we forget about war for time being. We, we can see just uh, just uh, in in this in this world, there are millions of people who are dying of starvation. There are millions of people who can't even find enough food to sustain their life for for a few hours. It's horrible. And yet there are also millions of people who have more than enough food and throwing it away. And. Many people feel, of course, they want to help by, by giving food, by giving aid. But the problem is not lack of food. Again, the problem is, is greedy, selfish minds. Give people the rights that they, they, they are entitled to, then there will be no more terrorism. There will be no more terrorism. Treat people fairly. You can't point your finger of blame anywhere, I don't think. Otherwise, yeah, anger is, is quick to come. I don't think there's any one individual to blame. I think we need to take on, we need to understand that we all have a part to play. Maybe we're all to blame uh, in a material society. Why should a few people make huge profits when millions make huge losses? Because they're not contented with who they are or with what, what they are and they want more. Um, I think if we all help, help each other to be more satisfied with who we are and what we have, people wouldn't strive for more. How is power to be used so that it is not hated? If, in addition to whatever anti-terrorism measures are taken, our Western governments could make a visible common commitment to some new initiatives that would put power at the service of the most frustrated, what might happen? If only. A further round of debt cancellation concerted international initiative to break the deadlock in the Holy Land and bind the security of Israelis and Palestinians together, a review of sanctions in Iraq, a consultation on economy and environment in the Middle East, resourced by the United States and the European Union. I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. Other wars have different causes, but this particular war 
that seems to be escalating now. Its, it's real cause is mind strongly grasping onto wrong, wrong view, right, wrong religious view. This oppression, this atheism, which is overwhelming the land of Islam, cannot be destroyed by anything other than jihad, and other than bullet, and other than martyrdom operations. I think we can see the, the minds of the so-called terrorists, who I think really believe that their actions of killing were justified by their religious belief. This is completely wrong. I would like just to read a few verses from the Holy Quran which indicate that the teachings of Islam is absolutely against violence, violence against killing, against all kinds of aggression. Listen to the Quran. And he said, that's Muhammad our Prophet, Oh my Lord, these men are unbelievers. And the Lord answered, Then bear with them and wish them peace. They shall know. And in another verse, God says, Whosoever will, let him believe. And whosoever will, let them disbelieve. As for the taking of life, God says in the Holy Quran, whoever killed a human being is as though he had killed all mankind, and that whoever saved a human life is as though he had saved all mankind. Equally, the view of maybe the Americans thinking that they are correct, they are right, the way they see the world is correct and right, and trying to support that, and the revenge is right, it's okay for them to take life, is equally wrong. This is definitely a wrong view. It can actually only lead to suffering. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. We, we can sign agreements, we can live together, but we cannot do it with a gun in our hand, and that goes for both Jewish people as well as our opponents. Of course, the general reaction seems to be wanting to point a finger of blame, trying to find who is responsible, who is responsible, uh, and then wanting to, um, I think, in the words of um, the American president, Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. That just perpetuates the crazy minds, that perpetuates the suffering. The uh, American government talked about whatever response there would be, there would be collateral damage. And by collateral damage, they mean the killing of innocent people. I lose my wife. I'm my children. Is that fair? Nobody else, nobody says something to stop this mascot. I think about the families, the children. I am. Um, I'm, I'm a loving guy. And I'm also someone, however, who's got a job to do. And I intend to do it. This is a terrible moment. But this country will not relent until we have saved ourselves and others from the terrible tragedy that came upon America. Who do we want to protect? Don't we want to protect living beings? If we want to protect living beings, how can we possibly go out and destroy living beings? I find it completely inconceivable that we can 
witness the horror of New York. And this is all my husband's information. This is a, I called every 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 single hospital everywhere. Everything I called every hospital. It's like 38 of them. There's no sign. And then this is a wedding picture of Stephen. We haven't even been married a year. David Ferrugio is a big letter D. And he's about 5'8", 135 pounds. He's, he's built. And he's got it. He's also, he's unique in ABC The Kid. A lot of people call him that and it's about, he's 45. How can we contemplate that and think, I now want to inflict this on someone else and it's okay because they've got a slightly different color of skin. They're a different race. To me, completely inconceivable. up the whole underside of the aircraft. You think there was some sort of a propaganda ploy and these people were Kurds and Saddam Hussein had murdered and put in there and things like that. But it, it was obvious that in fact it was being used to every children. So each night the families gathered in them. feel sorrow, we must feel sorrow. The feeling of sorrow is very important. The feeling of empathizing with others' pain is very important. And yet, it is also very important that that feeling of sorrow doesn't turn into depression, or doesn't turn into anger. Those are two usual responses. We think people are our enemies. But if we check, in reality, hatred and ignorance are the enemies that motivate people to harm others. Bombing people is not going to solve the problem because hatred and ignorance are states of mind. They're not people. And yet we do want to know how can we respond. We think we can't just turn a blind eye. We can't just pretend this hasn't happened. I think the very first thing we need to do is to actually make a determination. I'm going to overcome my own hatred, my own ignorance. If I don't overcome hatred and ignorance, then I may just be another angry person with a banner calling for world peace. America's war on terrorism opens the door for Russia in, che in attacking the Chechen rebels. It opens the door for China in attacking the people in Tibet. It opens the door in Indonesia in attacking the Muslim, the Muslim, Muslim weapons. It opens the door to the dogs of war. That's what, the, that's what America's war on terrorism does. It's an absolute catastrophe for humanity if America is allowed to get away with this. But on the other hand, it's come at a time, in a sense, where the potential for growing for an anti-war movement is better than it's ever been in the history of humanity, I would argue. You know, the mind of anger, the mind of hatred, leads to the desire to harm others. Until that cycle of violence is broken, until somebody takes the courage to say, well, I'm not going to respond. I want us to sit down and talk about it. That peace won't come. So it looks like to me what I need to do, first of all, is to make sure that I don't have anger in my mind by replacing that anger with compassion. And compassion is necessarily active because compassion is a wish to protect others. If you wish to protect others, you will protect others. Of course, we all want world peace, but we, first of all, we need to find this in our hearts. We believe that there's a, a birth of beings and then there is the birth of a human being. And that during our life that we should strive to do best that we can to make the best of our lives and to do good deeds and to live the best life that we can lead and to help people who are weaker. I think service to, to humanity is a high aim for human beings.
So maybe for some people that does mean protesting. But it would be protesting with a powerful mind of compassion, not a weak mind of anger or hatred. Oh, the message is basically that people understand what's happened in America, they understand the pain that people have been through, but they don't think the answer is more violence, they think the answer is love and they think the answer is understanding and sharing the bounty. And I think that's basically what we're all saying today, is that you don't fight hate with hate, you fight hate with understanding and compassion. If we have compassion we will not stand and just watch others harm each other without doing anything about it. If we have compassion, we will speak out. This is to John Howard. Retaliation is not the answer. Let peace and love rule. We're all one. If we have compassion, we will do whatever we can do to influence the minds of world leaders who, after all, are largely dependent upon the people of their country for their actions. Right now, there's a lot of revenge in me, I guess, you know, I guess a lot of people feeling the same way. I, I, again, I don't mean to sound cruel or nothing like that, but we do something, you know, uh, do anything, revenge, find a guy, um, I don't know, do something. There has to be some sort of a payback or, or revenge. I, I, Defense sources say they fear an angry American people may bounce President Bush into precipitate action. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. Killing is never a solution. Harming others is never a solution. We're all the same. <laughs> we all just want to be happy. We all just just want to be free from suffering. Um, and how can we regard our own happiness as more important than happiness the rest of the world? We still have a medieval attitude, you know, that I'm I'm in my castle and here I am. I'm protecting my people. There are no borders. What does my country or or your country mean? And if people, I think, understand what it means, you know, who is my neighbour, what it means to be a neighbour to some, somebody else within their own community, they realise actually we are a neighbour uh, in the worldwide community. You saw those buildings explode and it said to you, oh wait, I saw them explode in Iraq too, and oh, that's what it meant. It didn't just mean that something was hitting a target and it, and, it, and it was very beautiful. I think people are having that response. I felt so proud of the way New York reacts. Isn't this park wonderful where people have their memorials out for people who are dead and they have their flags out and they seem to find that there's nothing contradictory between that and the and the, and the peace symbols that are all around. In fact, it's almost as if the hippie incense and peace symbols were a religious uh, sacrament to many New Yorkers who really have suffered a loss. There are over 30,000 people on the streets in London today on the 13th of October protesting against the American and British war being carried out in Afghanistan supposedly designed to stamp out terrorism. This is an amazingly diverse protest with a wonderful cross-section of Islamic and Western groups all coming together to show how much they disapprove of this policy which is being exacted under our name. Our prophet has said to us, you know, you can never be a believer if you go to bed on a full stomach and your neighbor is hungry. We've got everything. You know, we can feed everyone, we can help everyone. Everyone can have a really good way of life here if everyone just works together. Rather than working for individual happiness, we think, I want to work for the happiness of the whole of the world. You know? If everyone had that attitude, 
then I think the world's problems would be over very, very quickly. I know it's, it's, it's uh, some people would say, well, why should I give? Um, why not? I mean, if God has given you, uh, blessed you with lots of money and, and lots of wealth, what's wrong? And I mean, we believe in charity. We need to just share, share everything. But most of all, share our love, share, share our compassion. I think we really need to start talking more and being less wrapped up in ourselves and our lives and start looking around us and listening to other people. With wisdom, we understand it is possible for all living beings to be free from suffering. If we don't understand that, then we never give peace a chance. It doesn't need some military solution. There is no military solution. There is no economic solution. The solution lies in our hearts and our minds. So I think it's up to each individual one of us to, to show that example. And only if we are learning in this way how to love can anything we say have any weight in a violent world. When communities come together with love in their hearts, cherishing, then we can show the world a better example. There is a better way of doing this. We are all human beings and we all know um, the right from wrong. And, and, and truth from, from falseness, and we should practice this truth, we should practice what is right, keep away from evil, keep away from what is wrong. I think with that example, that living example, then there is a chance, definitely is a chance, that we can find peace throughout the world. But it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be quick. It's taken us a long, long time to get into this mess. It's going to take a little bit of time to get out of this mess. But if we work together with, with, with peace, love and compassion in our hearts, then, then definitely we, we can accomplish. We need to understand it is possible for there to be world peace. And based on our feeling, deep feeling of empathy for others, we then develop the most compassionate wish, which is how wonderful if they were free from suffering. deeply feel others' suffering, to deeply empathize with their pain, with their loss, with their sorrow. We should use whatever comes to mind and most powerfully moves our mind. develop this deep feeling of empathy. We may choose to meditate on the suffering of those who experienced the tragedy in New York, in Washington. Oh my God! He called me from the 106th floor and he was asking me what was going on because they didn't really know. There was just a lot of smoke. It was having, they were having a hard time breathing. I told him to get out of the building as fast as he could, just to get out and come home to his family. Taking a look. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! It's a telling image. 
If estimates of the dead are correct, every such vehicle in the area could be covered. My niece Juliana was a lovely, beautiful little four-year-old girl, full of life. My sister was the bubbliest person in the world. Suffering is experienced continuously throughout the world, one tragedy after another tragedy, one follows the other like waves on a great ocean. Imagine their fear and their wish to protect their families from bombs, from burning. I was trying to pull the small children from the rubble, he says. Then the second aircraft came and dropped a bomb and a wall collapsed on me. Survivors say two aircraft dropped bombs, killing 22 members of the same family group. Reddy Gul did speak last night. She told a staff member simply, I have lost my children. slowly and painfully. The country they arrive in is very different from their homeland. The camp is empty of food, of water, of human spirit. This is what it is to have no roots, no hope. This is what it is to be a refugee. I can only leave her to God. I don't have the money to treat her. That's why she's lying there, he said. Contemplating deeply in this way, generating feeling in our hearts, feeling their pain, feeling their sorrow. We transform this experience of sorrow. Passionate wish. How wonderful if all these living beings were free from suffering and fear. How wonderful if all these living beings were completely free from all suffering. in our hearts.
personal as possible. It is a mind that is filled with hope. It is a mind that leads to action. Peace. 